Hello everyone, happy Friday. Last week, it was about last week, uh, Justin Bieber hit the news again. So he's on this tour, which I kind of call the I'm Sorry Tour. Um, it's really called, I think, Purpose, but one of the, his flagship songs is this Sorry, which uh, if you listen to the lyrics, it's probably about Selena Gomez, which is one of his ex-girlfriends. Uh, but it's also, in, and I think Justin has even said this in interviews, it's, it's also an apology to many of his fans, because he's, he's been kind of a dick in, in, in the public spotlight over the years. He's, you know, he's been caught kind of uh, racing a Lamborghini in a neighborhood full of children. He's, uh, he's even was spitting on fans from a balcony. And so, um, but, but this video that went viral last week is a video of him throwing a gift back at a fan, just this really rude gesture. And if you you know paid any attention to the comments on social media, there was like a collective just kind of disappointment again in Justin Bieber. I'll get back to that. Uh, last summer, I was in this like awful condition. I had this rash that I think it, it started on my feet, but then it spread to my arms and it was all over my neck and it was getting on my face. It was just terrible. I was becoming depressed because of how much I had. I was itching and I was covering myself up to go out. And it was so hot outside, but I was wearing sweaters because I didn't want people to see this crazy rash that was on my arms. And I thought it was just an allergic reaction and it'll just go away. But it just kept getting worse. And so I finally decided I've got to go see a doctor. Um, the thing was, though, it didn't seem like it was an emergency room visit, right? I wasn't dying, so I'm not going to go bother a doctor in an emergency room about this. But making a primary care physician appointment is going to take me another month. And so it was just like, I've got to, I've got to have a faster solution than this. So there's a bunch of these urgent care clinics that are opening up all over Chicago. They're becoming very pretty popular these days. So I went to a same-day visit to an urgent care clinic, and as soon as I saw the doctor... Um, I didn't even get done explaining what was wrong. About 30 seconds after she saw me, she's like, you have a, a skin uh, skin eating parasite. And it's one of the worst cases I've ever seen. Uh, she started asking me, have you been to any third world countries or have you, have you had sex with anyone with these same symptoms? And I was like, no, I've never been to a third world country. And what the fuck? No, I haven't I haven't had sex with someone who going through this. This is crazy. Um, so she prescribed me this, this crazy treatment. I had to go cover myself in this, this ointment uh, a couple days for hours. I'd have to spend covered in this. Uh, my wife and my one-year-old kid would have to go through the same thing. And then we'd also have to steam and burn basically everything in our house uh, or throw it away. All the sheets, the bedding, the, the couches, clothing, uh, anything basically I've had contact with would have to get clean, thrown away, um, or, 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 you know, somehow sanitized. This was awful. I, she said good luck as I left the place. And I walked home. I started crying. And this was terrible. Like, how am I going? How's, how's my family going to go through this? This is terrible. Um, I decided, like, to go through this hell, we better have a second opinion. And so I tracked down a dermatologist. I had to drive a couple hours to go see this dermatologist who could, could see me the next day. And she took one look at me, and she's like, oh, man, this is this is really bad, but we will have you fixed up really soon. And that was it. She said I had a contact allergy. And she looked at my feet, and she's like, clearly it started there. It looks like you're allergic to something that your feet had, you know, touch with, uh, like your shoes or sandals, because you can see this band of, of really where it's bad. And that's funny, because, like, the, the, the urgent care doctor didn't even look at my feet, uh, even though I was trying to explain to her that that's the worst place that this is happening. But the, the, the dermatologist gave me a prescription for some antihistamines and some steroidal cream. And I was, in 72 hours, I was 100% better. It was gone. We had just saved ourselves a ton of misery uh, and pain by just going to this dermatologist. So, but it also made me think, like, why was the dermatologist so wrong? In, uh, in 1986, there was, a, there was a guy named Terry Mullen. Uh, who noticed that there? He came into contact with. He was reading about something called the uh, the what is it? I've already the Bader Meinhof Gang. It's this really obscure terrorist organization from West Germany. Very bad group of people. Uh, but most people haven't heard of this gang. This this terrorist gang. And he had read about them, and then very soon later, in very random other reading, that name cropped up again. Bain Bader Meinhof. 
And so he, it made him think, like, that's odd. That's a very odd coincidence. And he gave it this name, the, the Bader-Meinhof phenomenon. Well, it's most commonly known in, in maybe the scientific, psychological community of, as a frequency illusion. You see something, and then because you're now interested in it, you keep seeing it over and over and over again. For example, schadenfreude is now a, a word that I, somehow I've seen and it became kind of more interested in recently. So now I see it everywhere. It was in an article in the Wall Street Journal a couple days ago. I saw it yesterday again in some random tweet. Again, had no, these things, these events weren't connected in any way, but now I see this word over over and over and over again. What is that? Why is this happening? Well, I also have talked about recently about the invisible gorilla experiment, how, you know, you become, there, there was this really neat experiment of, of watching this team pass a basketball. And as you're counting passes, you completely miss this gorilla who slowly crosses into your field of vision. Why? Why do we miss the gorilla? Well, we, we become engrossed in a task, even a simple task. We miss so much of the world around us. We're blind to almost everything else that's occurring around us. But then as soon as you recognize this gorilla, another kind of funny thing happens. As soon as you find out about the gorilla experiment, you don't miss the gorilla. You hardly, you can't miss the gorilla. So when you watch this gorilla experiment or, or new variations of this gorilla experiment, you see the gorilla crossing in front of you, but you start missing some other really interesting things that are happening in this experiment, which include uh, the background color changing. You miss a player of the team just just exiting the game. So again, you become engrossed with this thing, this pattern that you keep looking for, the gorilla, and you miss so many other things. This is what happens with the Bader-Meinhof phenomenon. So um, back to the dermatologist, I was asking the dermatologist, like, why did this urgent care doctor miss such an obvious thing that you caught? And she's like, because she's an urgent care doctor. She, this is what she sees constantly. She sees parasites and, and, and diseases like this. So as soon as she sees anything with a symptom like this, it becomes this pattern that she sees over and over again. She's not diagnosing things that are just contact allergies like I am. And so this is a really great reminder about how stuck we get on things. Uh, you know, we're looking for things like negativity. Say you're, you're, you're feeling particularly like self-loathing. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. You keep thinking about how bad you're doing. That's all you see, right? And meanwhile, while that's all you see, how you're failing, how you're screwing up, there's awesome opportunities that you keep missing over and over again. Schadenfreude is actually a really interesting expression that was very apropos in this. It means being stuck on kind of you deriving satisfaction from the misery of others. And that's interesting, right? Because I think a lot of people are stuck on schadenfreude. You're stuck watching for the misery of others. Meanwhile, what are all the awesome opportunities and things that are just passing you by? If you go back to the Justin Bieber video, I, I, I encourage you to, to watch it. I'll, I'll drop a link in, in the video, um, but go ahead and watch it again. Turn the sound up. Watch very carefully Justin Bieber's mouth as this video is progressing, and you'll see what he says. He says something like, why did you throw that at me? The person who we thought he was throwing this gift back, the person, it wasn't a gift. It was something she wanted autographed, and she threw it at his face. I think a lot of us would react very similarly. If someone threw something at our face, we would probably throw it right back at them. So it's a very, again, just a very interesting situation where we missed it the first time because I think we have a pattern that we're watching for, you know, with, with folks like Justin Bieber, that we miss really what exactly happened in that video. Thanks again for watching another video. We are almost halfway to 200 subscribers, and then we can start improving the lighting and the camera. Um, so please tell your friends about this channel, and please subscribe, and I will see you again soon. Have an awesome weekend.